Hello everyone and welcome to my bold and beautiful Today Update channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Finn grills Lee about Luna and Donna fears Eric is dying moment on the bold and the beautiful Broken Ridge prepare for the forthcoming fashion challenge, Donna learns Eric's kept a secret, and Finn wants answers from his mama. Brooke and Ridge make out in the office and he wonders why they left home. Brooke remarks that they demanded a change of decor and to stop allowing about Deacon and Sheila. They do to debate about Deacon. Brooke says he's made some bad opinions, but he's also made some good bones, lately similar as his relationship with Hope and El Giardino. Perhaps he just looks at Sheila unprejudiced. Ridge reminds her, we're talking about Sheila. Brooke moves on. They've more important effects to suppose about, like her son's relationship with Ridge's son, if they can call it that. Rotating, Brooke decides she wants to concentrate on positive effects and admires Ridge's rearmost design. He tells her that Freud would say she's the reason he wants to master his father. At home, Eric works on a design and cons with fabric trying to find the perfect lace. He calls RJ and leaves him a communication before starting to cough. Holding his handkerchief over his mouth he hacks until Donna comes by and asks if he's okay. He weakly insists he's forfeiture. In the design office, RG sketches and flashes to kissing Luna after telling her she's not leaving Forrester. Luna walks in and he tells her it puts him in a good mood to see her. Luna admires his delineation and thanks him again for helping her stand up to her aunt Lai. RG says she has no right to tell her whether she can or cannot work at Forrester. We all love having you then, especially me. Talk turns to the challenge and Luna tells RG he's killing it. He's glad to have her by his side. I want you to know, I fully believe in you. He's there for her. They go on about how probative they've been to each other in clinch. In Finn's office, Lai and her son bandy a case whose life she just saved. She asks if he's had any updates from Steffi. Finn says no, but he's determined to get them home. Lee advises him to make it be. Finn switches gears and says he saw Luna the other day. Lai sniffs, I heard. Finn asks, why are you averring she leave Forrester creations? Lee pretends to check her pager and Finn says, nice pass that didn't indeed joggle. He asks her again about Luna. Lee takes a call and also Finn points out she still hasn't answered him. He wants to know why she's driving his kinsman out of city and what's going on between her and Luna. In the main office, Charlie tells Ridge he just got word that there's another payload of bling coming. He's ready and agitated about the father versus son showdown. Ridge squints at him as he carries on. Charlie wants to know if the fashion challenge will be passing at high noon like the OK Coral. Brooke thinks he's mixing up his westerns. Ridge assures him there won't be a shootout, but this may be his pater as last stage. Charlie will make sure everything is set for the showdown at the OK Coral. Ridge grunts it's just a fashion showdown with his father. In the Forester manse, Don is spooked when Eric drops his handkerchief and she picks it up to find blood on it. Eric, he doesn't want to make further of it than it is. Donna realizes it's not the first time he's coughed up blood. Eric didn't want to worry her presently. Donna embraces him. Eric admits the coughing up blood has been going on for a while, so Donna calls the croaker and gets put on hold. Eric harangues that it's not going to change anything. He's going to live while he's alive. I am determined to do my grand home stretch. Eric Donna B&B and B in Finn's office, he tells his mama that Luna seems so sweet. He remembers when he was little that she and Aunt Poppy lie interrupts, Penelope. Finn continues on to say they just faded from their lives. Luna says you were the reason why, mother. So I'm going to ask you again what's going on. Lay snaps at Finn that he should concentrate on his family. Finn retorts, Luna is my family. Lay smothers, fine. You want to know what I've against Luna and her mama, my little family? Luna's mama turned my life upside down times agone. I'll no way forgive her for that. Lai B&B &B in the design office, RJ tells Luna she came to Forrester at the right time. They bandy Eric's health and RJ says he doesn't suppose his pater, realizes how important this fashion challenge means to his forefather. Luna RJ B&B &B in the main office, Ridge adjusts gowns on a mannequin as Brooke tells him she knows that he's in a veritably delicate situation, he loves his father but is determined to beat him. Ridge confirms, there's not stopping this raw train. 
At the forester manse, Donna brings Eric tea and water and urges him to rest. Eric insists he's forfeiture. Donna argues that easily he's not and doles out his capsules. Eric hates that she called the croaker. Just also, a knock comes at the door, it's Dr. Colby. Donna thanks him for coming snappily. Colby asks about the coughing up blood and Eric says it's been going on for a couple of weeks. The croaker looks terrified. Donna complains that they don't have an opinion yet, we need to know. As the croaker stammers, Donna frets, is Eric is he dying? Donna asks stunner questions about Eric's health effects or meant looking good for B and B's primogenitor. In the bold and the beautiful recap for October 17, 2023, Donna gets a suggestion as to how bad her honey bear's condition truly is. Bold and the beautiful recap highlights in addition, Finn makes his mama account for her conduct, Ridge and Brooke get their filler of Charlie, and Luna thanks RJ for his hindrance. Now let's dig a little deeper into what exactly happened. Case management Eric's flash of alleviation was snappily followed by yet another coughing fit, accompanied by inundations of blood. Having heard the chatter clear from the other room, Donna contended in to assess the situation. Eric claimed he was fine, also dropped his bloody handkerchief. Before Donna could state her enterprises, Eric prayed her not to make a big deal out of nothing. Donna honored that it was a big deal and called Eric's croaker. Eric complained that his gal could do what she wanted, but it wasn't going to change anything. He was going to live while he was alive. He was still bound and determined to do his grand homestretch. Dr. Colby was soon on the scene and grounded on his response to the rearmost update. All wasn't well. In fact, it appeared so dire that Donna had to wonder if the croaker would tell her that Eric was dying. Father Viz. Son, meanwhile, at Forrester Creations, Brooke and Ridge tried to abolish all studies of Cleric and Sheila, which proved to be easier said than done. In the expedience of changing the subject, Brooke suggested agitating her son's relationship with Crest's son. If you can call it a relationship, that also proved to be a no-go area. Rather, the two turned their attention to the forthcoming showdown between father and son. Charlie had opinions. Big opinions. As far as he was concerned, the whole thing was like the shootout at Theo K. Coral. Despite being chagrined by the comparison, Ridge had to admit that the runway challenge might veritably well be his pater. Last stage. Across the hall, Luna thanked RG for helping her stand up to her aunt while he claimed that she did all the work. The only thing he did was get them in the same room together. Heart of Stone at the sanitarium, Lie did everything she could suppose of to avoid Finn's refocused questions about Luna. Unfortunately for her, Finn didn't intend to give up until he got some answers. So, what was going on? Why did she contend that Luna leave FC? Luna's mama turned my life upside down times a dawn, offered Lai, who added, I'll no way forgive her for that. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.